I've thought a lot about uh, life and stuff and what we're doing. I really, I really uh, appreciate being amongst guys like you. I've given speeches to the uh, Acers. Maybe there's even some Acers in here. And they're fun because they're a bunch of crazy nuts. They're fun to be around. And every year they have me there doing the last few years, haven't because I've been so busy. But years and years ago, I started out as a, I got schooled and become an electrician. I traveled about 100 years ago, something like that. I traveled all over the United States from coast to coast and worked on construction jobs, and I loved it. But I found it very interesting because I'd always ask the people there, do you like what you do? No, not a one of them did. And I thought that was interesting. I'm going to ask that question without raising a hand. Is, there any, is there anybody in here enjoy what you do? Don't, don't raise your hand then. I think that's cool to be amongst people who enjoy what they do. I think that's extremely important and very, very cool because I've sure been around a lot who don't. And when I get a, in a group like this, it's really exciting because I know a good share of you really do enjoy what you do. And through the hard times and the tough times and the good times, we still are positive about it and enjoy it. And I appreciate that very much. You know, as a ride designer and creator, I've designed and invented a lot of rides and got patents on rides. They kind of wanted me to speak about that, sort of some of the stories that are kind of fun. And so I've thought and thought and thought about it. And of course, there's hundreds of stories that when involved a lot of grand openings of big rides and all the fun stuff and people passing out by the stratosphere tower and everything. But I thought of, of quite a bit about it, and right here locally, right here in, in not but 15 minutes from here, there's a guy who owns a cave called Cave of the Winds. And as a, a guy who builds uh, zip lines, they wanted one, so I went and talked to him, and he put a zip line there. It's like a, it's like a big uh, cavern but there's a big canyon there, and we put a zip line. He liked it, and so he found out that I'd create a lot of things. So he says, Stan, one day, he said, I need you to put your thinking cap on and design something for my great big canyon. It's almost like the Grand Canyon. And, and of course, then that got me going, and I couldn't leave it alone. What happens, I, my wife knows that. I get out of bed at 2 or 3 in the morning and go sit and think about things, and a lot of the design work or create work, work you're doing rides. Now, most engineers, when they do rides, they get together and they say, let's build a ride. Me, I look at in reverse. I say, well, let's, what thrills people? What, what's thrilling? And that, to me, sounded kind of a really neat challenge. So I started to work on it, and I worked on it quite a bit in my mind. And, and I kept thinking, let's see. It's about 1,000 feet across that great big, it's like the Grand Canyon. And his business is right on the one edge. I thought, gosh, if I could just take an... Stretch cables clear across that, great big cables, put a trolley, and then let people swing from that, clear 800 across. That'd be kind of fun. Then I kept thinking, and that wasn't good enough because it was, I like the rule, keep it simple, stupid, kiss. And you all know that that is. You can design and build a lot of crazy things, but if they're too maintenance trouble and everything, you don't want to do that. You want things simple. We want our life simple. We want to keep things so they're organized and simple. So that didn't work in my mind, so I spent another month or two. And I thought, well, if I can send a trolley out there to the center of that 300-foot canyon, surely I got the ability to be able to bring the trolley back besides. Oh, so then the juices started flowing. I started getting this all put together. I was kind of excited about it, so I told Sandy, that looks kind of good. Yeah, that looks kind of scary. She says, good heck, I'd never ride that stupid thing. And of course, there are a lot of people who wouldn't ride it, but there are people who do. So anyway, I went ahead and, and got a little animation. Guy did an animation of it with shows the two people going clear down through the canyon, swinging for like four, four, eight hundred feet, whatever. And I got it on a little uh, iPad, and we were in Colorado at the time, and I called Grant, and I said, Grant, Sandy and I are here, but I'm in a hurry. I forget what he's doing. Don't really matter. What I, but I had to get back. I says, meet me at the edge of your park. If you'll drive down, the, I'll show you something real quick. So we went there, and I said out on the tailgate and pushed the button, and he went over and watched it, and he said, holy hell, you're nuts. You're absolutely crazy. When can we do it? <laughs> I says, I'm excited. So we formed a partnership and went to work. And now that was a big job. That was a challenging project because 
First of all, I was too tight to get a chopper to bring the cables across or the wire to pull the cables, which I should have done. We shot the arrows and shot the strings and hiked through the cliffs and climbed through the cliffs and got a rope through and then we got a, another heavier rope through and then we brought the power company in there's those great big huge uh, resistance drums and pull drums so they could pull our big cables across that canyon. It's about just under a thousand feet. Then we got the engineering high tech stuff and they said, well, we had to have anchors 70 and 80 feet in the ground because the rocks were fragmented. So we did all that, but it's a lot of challenge and that makes it fun. I'm telling you that story because I want, to, I want you to understand this because we're gonna show you a video of it. So anyway, we got that pretty well done and it was about ready. And so we started commissioning it and you all know what that means. You've run it and run it and run it with weights and hundreds of times and make sure there's not one instant or you don't put it out there. So it was really looking good. I was getting excited and we got it all ready. And I, was, I thought, wow, this is, this is going to be really awesome. And uh, but I said, those guys, there's a, isn't that cedar tree down there? You guys, aren't you going to hit that tree? No, we're way away from that tree. I went to town to get some parts and come back and they showed me a video on the phone, it had clipped that tree, squirrels jumping out. <laughs> I said, I don't think so. <laughs> so we had to hike down the canyon, cut a tree out of the way. But we got it all done, and, and that's, that was really a fun thing. And the, the reason I think about that a lot is then we uh, they found about it on the Today Show or something like that, Natalie Morales and Jenna Bush. And they come out here, and they did a million-dollar uh, uh, deal of it, showed the whole thing for a 10 minutes on the TV, they come out with all their people and we stayed in the Broadmoor. That's what I'm thinking that because that's where we were about four years ago. How many, Grant asked me to ask you, how many here have seen Bert the Conquer on that ride? As how many have seen that? So one, two, three, four, a couple of you. That's, that's amazing because that got, I, I don't even comprehend this kind of stuff because I'm not into that, but I used to get like, here somebody got a million hits. That got two, to date, just on Bert the Conquer on that crazy ride has received 264 million hits. That, that to me is, goes way over my head. And then that doesn't count the YouTube and everything. And they've been doing a lot of people on it. In fact, I was kind of happy because I made some money too because I'm part of it. I, got, I did a part of that. So it's been really fun and it's only 20 minutes from here. But anyway, uh, I want to explain a little bit because I want you to see this video. Because I've got a lot of fun videos from rides we've created and invented with my teams for years and years with SNS. A lot of fun, fun ones. And I kept thinking, what's the fun? What's the goodness? Well, anyway, that pterodactyl right over here, there's two girls. And you've got to re realize, I've got to go through this so you really understand. When they ride that, they go out on this, uh, I put a diving board out like over the edge of the canyon. And then there's a floor with guardrail. Now, I've got to explain all this because then you'll already understand. And then the floor opens up. My guys call that the gates to hell. And so <laughs> when that floor opens up, then you're sitting there. And then with, hydraulically with accumulator, I lean you forward. So you're facing the bottom of the canyon, then release you. Now... Ben, let's show that video, and, and you gotta keep your eye on the girl on the right, because there's two sisters. The one sister did not want to go no matter what. The other sister was begging her to go. Please come and go. Now, watch this video, and you'll see that, but keep your eyes. Ben, are you playing that video? What it? Here we come. Now, that's the gates to hell. <laughs> Oh, don't laugh yet. It's not time. It's not time. You're, I'll give you time to laugh, I promise. No, no, no. Okay. Now, keep your eyes on the girl on the right. She did not want to do this. The one on the right did not. Now, just see, it's leaning forward now. Leaning forward. Keep your eyes on the sister that didn't want to go. That's on the right. One on the left really wanted to do this, but the one on the right did not want to do Gone. St. Peter. No, keep your eyes on her. Don't take your eyes off the girl on the right. Don't take your eyes off of her. <coughs> okay, cut. Cut. It don't get any better than that. It don't get any better than that. <laughs> 
There's been a lot of, lot of really funny ones on that ride too. I mean, crazy, crazy ones and you can see on YouTube and stuff. And in fact, has anybody in this room ridden that ride? Other than Logan? Logan and Steele, Steele here, do you leave because I'm talking? No, here he's. Serious, that's, well, that's a, you have to do that sometime, get a, lot, get a real life, you know, it's really fun. <laughs> Thanks, Ben, for that video, that was cool. Oh yeah, you bet. I, I have tried really hard for many, many years, even though I'm getting up there in years. You all can notice that by the loss of hair and everything. And in fact, I haven't got a good memory. I got to go to that school with that guy. But <laughs> I still have to have notes. But anyway, I've tried really hard. Now, Ron Toomer and the guys, Errol and all that, that I bought that company, he would never ride a ride. I have always rode every ride I've created and invented first. Tried really hard, really hard. In fact, uh, we put the Dodampa over in uh, Japan, that roller coaster that goes uh, out of the hole. It, it's in the Guinness Book of World Records. It uh, goes from zero to 107 in less than two seconds. In case that one over your head, I'll repeat that. <laughs> zero to 107. That's, in fact, we could shoot at about 100 and 120. But it always shoots at 1.7. That's what they recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records on that coaster. And it's kind of funny because I'd planned on going over and had all my guys there. They were just finishing up. And the guy called a good friend of mine over there. Oh, Mr. Shackett, you must come to Japan and ride a ride because nobody will ride very scared. <laughs> I says, all right, I'll be there. Please don't ride it till I get there. So anyway, and that, was a, that was a phenomenal deal because you get in that gun and you come out of there and it makes that turn in your face, and they put it in the tunnel. And the first thing I did is I stood at the end of the tunnel. It come out of there going 100 and something miles an hour, just, whoof, just a poof, gone. And so that d definitely gets adrenaline pumping. It really does. And I come out of that. He wanted to go through a curve that was 97 degrees, and we did. We made 90, 97 degrees round, and it is a thrill. It's a, in fact, they've been doing that for, that's 20 years old, 20-something 20, 20 years old. And they've always had a line all the time. Then some idiot over there decided I'd put it straight up a hill and straight down. And you know, the thing. He wanted to put a circle in it, which I told them, don't do that. They didn't. That's not as fun now. So they put a, I said, if you want one of those kind of coasters, go buy one. Don't try to make that coaster into one. They put a circle in that ride. But anyway, yes, I always ride all the rides I designed first. And yes, I did ride that pterodactyl. And I was shivering the whole way. <laughs> it, it definitely wakes you up. I really, really appreciate being here and spend a few minutes on some of the things. And I've thought a lot about some of the stuff. I started building uh, bungee towers years and years ago. In fact, that relates to Colorado too, because back in those days, everybody was jumping from cranes and trees to get away from my patent because I patented oscillating a participant from a structure and so they could go up in the crane or go in the arch and do something, and people were getting hurt, and it was so sad. So we formed the NABA, National Association of Bungee Jumpers. We met here in Colorado and tried to get a lot of safeties going. I'll never forget one attorney said, well, you don't have to test every cord. And I said, well, we do. We took every bungee cord seriously and made a great big long stretcher with hydraulic. We go, doo, doo, stretch it out, down it go. We'd serial number it, color code it, and it was a real professional system. In fact, in Japan today, they're still running most all of our towers. They're still running over in Japan. They don't have the problems they've had in the United States. And some of those towers are still up and run, and that's really cool. Uh, if they'd have stayed with those rules, and, but he said, well, you we don't have to test every cord. Tell me, Mr. Checkets, what do they test everything? And I didn't know, but I kind of made it up. I said, airplanes. And I found out later they do. They take every commercial airplane up and test it before they sell it. So uh, then he couldn't say much about that, but that was, uh, that was really cool. As I've thought a lot about some of the stories and some of the stuff that, I, that I've been involved with, it's sort of fun. I thought of another that I really want to tell you for a purpose. And that purpose is I want to motivate everybody in here that's listening to my voice to be happy and to don't take no for an answer. If you believe in something, you believe in yourself, you believe in what you're doing, whether, to, whether it is to add this ride or to add on or do whatever, and everybody, ah, don't do it, don't do it. Don't let that be your guiding force. Do what your gut tells you, do what you feel like. This is a kind of a neat story. I, I design most rides by what thrills people, and this is a true story. The roller coaster come from 
snowmobile and getting, getting going on a Mach 10 straight up and straight down. Another thing is I did is I took my kids, when the bungee jumping fell apart, I took my kids, and each one of you guys did the same thing. When your kids are little, you kind of throw them in the air. They kind of smile. They get a little older, you toss them one or two feet and catch them. We've all done it. And I thought to myself, that's a great idea. Why don't we just toss them 200 feet in the air instead of just a couple of feet? That'll work. That's a great ride. So I went to work, and I built a tower, and I tried to figure how I could toss people in the air, and we used springs, we used big cases of bungee jump, bungee cords, but it was too, it wasn't keep it simple, it stupid, it wasn't working that way. So then I come up with air and I called around to some of the great engineers, I said, can I run pistons over joints? And they all told me, no, you can't. Well guys, guess what, can't's a four letter word. We've got pistons around the world now by the, probably enough to go clear around the world, run over seams, it works fine as long as you do it right. And that's how we did the space shots and the turbo drops and all that with that air. So that's it. Don't take no for an answer. Well, my one son calls me ready, fire aim. And everybody says, Stan, you're too, you just moved too fast. You've got to do market research. I says, what for? Well, you just got to do that. And I had that tower all built there in my yard. And we were doing it. And having fun with it, and I thought, this is a great idea, small footprint, everybody's happy, let's do this. Got to do market research, so I called Lagoon, most of you who know who Lagoon is, it's Dave Freed, didn't even know him, I called him and introduced myself, and I said, no, I don't want to sell you nothing, but I want to talk to you about an idea, and I want you to give me your opinion. He said, I'll have Fustner, my safety consultant, and I'll have my engineers, and you're, you're welcome to come down. So Sandy and I decided we'd go down, so I went and bought a suit and a tie, which I didn't have at the time, so I'd look presentable. That's supposed to be funny, you're supposed to laugh. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, we go down there and meet, and he was very nice, very good. I like Dave Freed, and I like Fessner, they're great people. He said, no, that won't work. This is a true story. That won't work. If you build that mobile, they might, you might could sell one or two mobile. I said, I'm not them. mobile? I said, why won't it work? Look, it looks small footprint. Everybody watches it's fun. No, not, it's not going to sell those any good parks. You might sell, if you go to IAPA and try for a few years, might sell one or two some ho-dunk parks. That was my space shot, guys. That's the one that is all over the world today. Hundreds of them. In fact, some of the ho-dunk parks like Disney and little ones like Six Flags and all them got them. That's interesting. And now the rest of the story... Lagoon called us several years after and asked if they could buy a turbo drop and a space shot and they put it in their park. I tell you that story not because of me or my product, but I want you to grasp from that. If people tell you no, I don't care if people know what they're talking about, if you feel it in your heart and in your gut that it's right to build that new rec center, build that new park or do whatever, and you got the passion, you got the ability to push and make it happen, do it. Don't let people tell you, no, it won't work. Don't settle for that. Put forth the, pa- can you imagine the passion and the intelligence and the experience sitting in this room right now? That's what Rick and these guys are doing, pull us all together to share that. That's really cool when you stop and think about that. And everybody in this room has passion for what you do. I know you do, you wouldn't be here. And everybody has the ability to do those things. So don't let that go. Use that passion to do what you got to do. I feel I'd, I'd like to I'd like to tell a joke. I'm a little concerned about telling this joke, but I told this joke at, in front of Acers. And the funny part is, every time I talk to them, I go back the next year. They didn't. In fact, one lady did ask me a tell question one time. I said, "I'm building a roller coaster with an I beam and airplane tires," and she said. Stan, how are you going to keep that on the track? I said, oh, hell, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> That's supposed to be funny. <laughs> anyway, one thing that I'd go back each year to talk to them guys, and they'd, one day they'd blurt out, please tell the farmer's joke. So in making myself really and be embarrassed, and my wife won't even recognize me after this, so I go, she'll, she'll move away from me. I'm going to tell you a fun joke before we quit here about a farmer. Now, this is kind of, I'm going to animate a little bit, so bear with me. Now, there's this farmer out on his farm. 
he's got his house there and he's got a shop and a garage and he gets up one morning, he's really smart, he says, I'm gonna go stretch the bob wire and still using a big stretcher like you do with one, of course some of you don't know the you know, farmers. I got horses, I'm a farmer. But anyway, he got a good idea, so he took his truck up to where he's stretching the bob wires on the fence and he tied all four bob wires onto the truck. And he drove the truck and got them tight and he's so excited, he looked around and couldn't find his pliers. Crap! All of a sudden his wife came out of the house, honey, whoops, <laughs> honey, bring, bring my pliers. Uh, in the shack, on the bench, bring my pliers. He looks up. In the shop, on the bench, bring my pliers. Ah, she looks up. <laughs> the hell you doing, woman? Jumps up on the tailgate, goes through one more time. She goes. He jumped the truck. Busts all the bob wires up, flies down to her and says, what the hell didn't you understand about in the shop, on the bench, bring my pliers? She says, yes, an idiot, what do you didn't understand? There's a pair under the seat of the truck. <laughs> Run that video. You guys have been awesome. Thank you very much. I, I'm... And you guys might think this is crazy, but it's not. This is real. This is something that I can do soon, and I will do this soon. Okay, sure. These are rides that we've created at SNS and patented and built. All I'm saying is I'm doing this, I'm gonna show you what's next. And besides building little zip lines and fun stuff, we can build stuff like this. Now I know you're gonna say I'm crazy, but I'll, we already established that, that's what Rick said. Watch closely. That <laughs> gets your adrenaline going, don't it? How many in here would ride that? <laughs> I got one hand, two, four. Now, let me ask this. After you've seen about 100 people ride that, laugh and carry on, then how many would ride it? So, of course, that number gets bigger. No limits. Thank you. So you would write that. <laughs> Anybody got any questions for Stan? Oh, I got, Ben asked me. We got a couple minutes. I got, Ben asked me, he said, when you do your talk, write down what you would like them to say, the people to ask after you sat down. And I said, I couldn't think of anything I'd like him to say, but the one thing I'd like him not to say was, that was boring as hell. <laughs> no it, questions? <laughs> it wasn't that boring, right? <laughs> All right, big, one big question is that, that last thing you showed us that you're developing. Did you consider the safety part of that one? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. In fact, I don't know if you heard my talk, but that's the first thing we talk about is safety. We do safety. In fact, it's interesting. I might have missed that on my talk if I didn't. This is an interesting thing. I used to talk to engineers and groups, and at one time several years ago, we had safely thrilled 300 million people. That's about the amount of people in the United States, or 320, 320 something. And as of about two years ago, possibly a little longer now, you lose track of time as you get older, two and a half, three years ago, we had safely thrilled around the planet on rides created by SNS and soaring over one billion, one billion. To me, that's hard to even comprehend that. That's pretty cool. All right, one more question. How do we as a group, as an industry, know how to trust the rides that we buy from manufacturers 
especially when we see you design something that goes up in the air and it's possible a big wind gust hits it and carries it over about four or five football fields and misses the net. Well, first of all, you had rules and regulations, okay? And you don't shoot it when there's a gust of wind, okay? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to know what you're doing on your end, but you can usually trust anybody <laughs> if they've done their work and done all the standards, the STM standards. But one thing with stand check, it's I have over 35 grandkids, and I live by those standards and those rules and those regulations, but there's one that's even more powerful than that to me. I don't turn anything out that I wouldn't trust my grandkids to ride on. That's my safety. Stan Jackets, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Stan.